And without further ado, we're going to kick it over to Kirby Master with Fire Emblem Fates. It's cute. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Someone, someone donated for tall. Why? <laughs> um, don't you want a short run? Because it's a speed run, you know? All right. Hi, everyone. Um, we can introduce ourselves. I'm Kirby. I'm Milana. I'm Escarant. I'm Quo. Hi. Um, yeah, so we're here with Fire Emblem Fates. This is the second game with release, Fire Emblem game released on the 3DS. It kind of features the... Three routes, um, what's it called? It features like three different routes you can take, Birthright, Revelation, and Conquest, and people, including myself, thankfully donated for Conquest to win, so <laughs> the good one. <laughs> Let's go. Good job. And you all donated for female corn. It, it wasn't a blowout at all. I wonder why. <laughs> um, but yeah, Fire Emblem is a strategy RPG game, and you can customize your avatar in various ways, and that's what a lot of the incentives were for. So without further ado, we can go through the, what, one... Tall female, I believe. Yep, tall. Or actually, we just had a last-minute donation for oh. short. Yes! Let's go! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I want to hear some cheers for whichever hairstyle, <laughs> hairstyle you like, okay? <laughs> who, who, who likes this one? Uh, yeah. all right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay, that's it. Okay, okay, okay. We're going with this. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, purple? Who, who wants purple? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Purple. Let's go purple. All right, all right. All right. Uh, wh one, two, or three? One? Can I have one? Two? Three. We got three. three. We got three. three. We got three. We got three. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, what kind of eyes? We got the evil one. <laughs> <laughs> this is conquest after all. <laughs> I've mean, got to go with evil, yeah. <laughs> and what facial detail is funny? Let's. I patch. I, where is it? Oh no, the hair's covering it. Oh, no. no. I I think this tattoo is close enough. <laughs> okay, let's so. go. Okay. Um. So the naming incentive is. Jojo, I believe? It is Jojo. Is capital J, J, lowercase, lowercase o. o. Capital J, lowercase O. Correct. All right, Jojo, this is what you look like. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo! All right, so before I start the run, well, technically, we, I start time on new game, but avatar customization, all stuff like that. Yeah. But um, the, the boon, bane, and talent are what affects the avatar's Gameplay-wise, so the boon is basically the avatar's strong stat, which is strong. So she's gonna have a high strength stat. Dull, it means she's stupid. So she's gonna have a bad magic growth. And our talent, we'll go over that more later on. But it's basically her reclass option. So um, without further ado, can we get a t countdown of three, two, one with everyone in the, in the audience? Three, three two, two, one, go! go! Oh, would you like to receive notifications, including announcements <laughs> of new content and bonus data for Fire Emblem Fates from Nintendo via Spot Pass? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. Activating Spot Let's Pass. Let's go. Would you like to share your gameplay information with Nintendo? Yes. <laughs> you don't buy Activation complete. <laughs> First save. Only Yay. took us four minutes. <laughs> Okay, so we have a tutorial here, which is basically the game telling you, oh, this is what the game is. It's a turn-based strategy game. Um, you're supposed to attack these units, but, but you can literally just wait. Okay. And it doesn't care, so we're just going to spam start. There's an enemy phase, which, is the, which are all the red units. Um, and the game's also telling me, teaching you that you can also attack with two range units, with archers, but we're just going to wait instead, because we don't like attacking. We're going to be very pacifist for now. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Good tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> so the route split's going to happen roughly seven chapters in, but I need the donation to sound to close early because it affects the build of corn that I'm going to be using. So this is the first chapter. Um, it's another tutorial chapter. Our goal is to defeat Xander. It's basically a tutorial thing. We can access the options menu here by making things go fast. So skip actions is going to be the fun one. And we're going to get a level up off of corn here. When a unit levels up, they have a random chance of gaining a point in each stat. So if you can go over what each stat does, that would be great. Yeah, so uh, the important ones that we'll be covering are strength, obviously. Depends how hard you hit. Uh, magic for this run uh, is our bane, actually. So we're actually not going to be using it too much, other than, I think, one chapter. I don't think we use it at all in this run, but you would in birth. Okay. Oh, okay. 
Um, skill affects your hit rate and avoid, I believe, and a few other things. Skill affects your hit rate, crit rate, and skill activation rate. So it's, right. it's a useful stat in the speedrun setting, but not as important as strength and speed. Yeah. Uh, speed's the next one. Uh, if your speed is five over in this game, that means you'll double enemies, so you'll attack twice on uh, either your turn or the enemy turn unless the skills come into play. Uh, so obviously a good speed means more... Dead Remain output. focused! <laughs> I mean, speed. We want to go fast, right? Pretty, exactly. It's kind of, it's kind of important. <clears throat> uh, luck in this game, relatively useless. Uh, you need two points of luck to um, upper your, what is it, hit and avoid. <laughs> well, we're going to see our first reset here because I just missed an 84. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> feels bad, man. Feels bad. <laughs> feels bad. Oh, no. Game o JoJo just died. Oh, no. Rest Good in speed, peace. Oh. oh. Did I save? I hope I... I think you I, I tend to forget to save before that when that's like the first run killer. <laughs> but yeah, you have to, in order for that chapter to go, you have to land a 90 ish hit and an 85 hit rate. Um, it, the tech, actual hit rate's a little higher than what's displayed in this game because. Reasons. You, reasons, yeah. You can explain the hit rate system a bit. Yeah, uh, so in the earlier Fire Emblem games, there was a one iron system. I'll explain that in a bit. And then everything up until Fire Emblem 13, so Awakening, one right before that was two iron. Uh, so basically it just takes two random numbers and calculates it, and it makes it so that um, if your hit rate's above 50%, you're a bit more likely to hit than what the game says. So let's say you have 90, really it's like 97%. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So basically for most games in this series, the game is more or less lying to you about what the actual hit rate is. Yeah, and then there's this game where uh, from 0 to 50 it's 1 RN, so it's just a nice line. If you get like a 25, it's a 25. Uh, and then above 50 it's also one RN, but um, what's the word you said? Trigger... It, 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 Trigger the metric it, function. Trigonometric. Yes. I would not remember that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was believed to be a weighted average of two RNs, but someone looked into the game code recently on Reddit and found out it actually does not run on a two RN system at all in Fates. It's just one, you just run, throws one RN with a minor sign, ridiculous sign function that has a tiny bonus to your hit rate. Because... Reasons. Reasons. We're not sure why. <laughs> All right, so this chapter introduces Dragon Veins, which are basically chapter-specific gimmicks that royals can activate, and Corn is a royal. We're usually going to use Corn to activate Dragon Veins if appropriate. But in this cap chapter, the Dragon Veins uses a bridge. Okay, give me a good level up, please. Good. Defense is good. good. Defense is good, yeah. She didn't get strength, but that's okay, because she only got strength like last, last two levels, so, you know, it's forgivable. This boss is very annoying because he is very dodgy. Um, so the goal of this chapter is to seize, and there are various different objectives in this game overall. Yeah, so seizing um, in this game compared to other games, anyone can seize. Uh, so basically there's going to be a tile, there's the red one that Kirby's standing on right now, and then you need to land on the tile, and then there's a special action to seize it, and that's going to end the chapter. Um, we waited a turn there for a reason that I cannot remember. Um, to, it's to kill the Sky Knights for more experience. It's just a safety strat to get more experience on Corrin earlier. It doesn't affect her much long term because she's not going to get more levels, but it gives her an earlier level up, which is nice yeah. in an earlier game. Uh, so yeah, the common chapter goals, Seize that we just talked about, Route, which is just wipe all the enemies, which conveniently is this chapter. Uh, and then there's also Defeat Boss, which no bonus points if you guess what it is. <laughs> <laughs> So we just got a goddess icon, which is the most useful stat. So, fun thing, um, luck is kind of considered a pretty useless stat in general, where in most Fire Emblem games, it gives like one point of hit and one point of avoid per luck point, usually. In this game, and usually stat boosters give you plus two luck. In this game, they realize how useless luck is, so they made luck give you um, four... They made the goddess icon give you four points of luck instead. The problem is, in this game, it's every two points of luck gives you a point of avoid and a hit. Ooh, that was that a was, nice that, level. That was a good level. That was a strong level. But yeah, so the goddess icon in this game, despite the quote-quote buff, is still as useless as a normal goddess icon. But yeah, so we're burning out down all the forests um, to move more quickly through this map and trying to kill everything in the way. We have a green unit named Ryoma. Um, green units... Are, they, they kind of are AI controlled, and they, you can't really directly control them. Which is kind of annoying because we kind of want to get as many kills as possible on Corrin, but Ryoma's running around just killing stuff instead. But oh well. Okay, so auto battle. We're setting this to Blitz, and auto battle is going to be one of the. It's probably going to be the, one of the MVPs of the run, because when you auto battle, you're going to have the AI control all unused player units for you. 
And the, the, the theme of this run is going to be, I want to do as little as possible. Because <laughs> a human moving units is a lot slower than the AI doing everything behind a skipping screen. Skipping. 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 Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, skipping was introduced in Shadow Dragon, so everything after that for speedrun purposes, obviously we want to skip as much as possible. It's, it's, it's a black screen after time. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert, Korn's mom just died. Oh, no. She just kind of went berserk. So she's Aww. a dragon, um, whatever, we don't care about dragon. We just got Azura, she's a thing -ish. We're not going to have her all the time through her early game, but we're going to recruit her later on in the conquest route. Her, she's basically the singer slash dancer of the game, which allows another unit to move again. and. Big sister. Dude, big sister! Due to the nature <laughs> of how we're standing at a black screen half the time, she's not going to be as useful as in other Fire Emblem speedruns, but she's still going to be important. Yeah, I'm sure her music is still very moving. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Ooh, Kaze. All right, so we, we're kind of just auto-battling to get Corrin down. As a safety strat, I'm going to have Corrin. Oh, bye, Ryoma. I'm going to have Corrin heal with the Vulnerary, because this boss can kill her if I'm not careful. OK. Uh, it's eight, five, uh, that's fine. She could take two hits. Ah, we're good. All right, give me a good one. Give me a good one. Mm. Stop it. N n defense resistance is okay. Yeah. A little concerned about speed, but I think she got like three speed points so far, but I think it's just enough, if I remember correctly. We'll find out soon. We'll find out soon. Soon. <laughs> Damn. Soon. Okay, so that's, that was the last chapter before the pre route split. So this is the chapter where you have to decide. One of the three routes. There are two countries in this game, Nor and Hoshido, and the game is centered on the war between them. Birthright takes you on the route where you side with Hoshido, Conquest is where you side with Nor, and Revelation is where you just is what would have is basically what would have happened if Awful GDQ was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna side with Nor and play Conquest because you all thankfully donated for Conquest. I'm sorry, Awful GDQ fans, but maybe next time. <laughs> All right, so this chapter's goal is different depending on the route, actually. Um, our goal is to defeat four enemies out of five. This chap There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong in this chapter, actually, because like, everyone's hit rates are very, very unreliable for the most part. So like, if someone misses, then everything just kind of goes, goes to hell. Um, okay, Leo didn't miss. Please don't miss. Thank you. Please don't miss. Thank you. Um... All the battle to have Camila take out Hinoka. Thank you. Oh no, Camila. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So character dying in this chapter isn't doesn't actually matter as it, long as it's not Jojo. It, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. They come you, back anyways. You were supposed to attack her. Okay, thank you. So Sakura, who I just killed, um, she has Miracle, which allows her to survive a hit at one HP, and it's annoying if she activates it because it just wastes time. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I think she's the only enemy with, you have to kill at, with Miracle. But yeah, this is where the actual conquest starts. So we ha we're introduced to my castle, which is basically your base, where you can like make buildings, um, make kids, um, go to the lottery, <laughs> forge, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to build a staff store and buy a few important items. You don't have too much money, unfortunately. So we're going to buy something called a heart seal and some tonics. If you can explain what tonics are, that would be... Yeah, uh, so in Fire Emblem games, there are stat boosters. We spoke about the Goddess Icons, for example, that raise your luck by four. Uh, most of them are by two in this game, except health is five. Tonics are the same thing, except only for one chapter. So with a speed tonic, for example, you gain plus two speed, but only for the chapter you use it on. Uh, and that's going to be used a lot because... Um, well, it's going to be used a lot. <laughs> So, and we also just bought a heart seal, which is an item that allows you to reclass a unit. And Jacob, who is normally a butler, I'm going to reclass him into a great knight. And that's because... <laughs> 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 um, and great knight Jacob is pretty solid. Um, we're not going to use him because of, for combat, but rather for his setup bonuses. So there's a system that you might have noticed in this game called a pair-up. And in this game, it's called guard stands. If you're going to go over what pair, pair up is, oh, she's not fast enough. That's the problem. Ooh. Yeah, uh, so pair up, you can, it was introduced in the last game, actually, in Awakening. But you can uh, combine two characters together, so they're sort of standing on top of each other. And it also gives bonuses to uh, the main character on there. So Jacob as the Great Knight gives bonuses to Jojo. Um, and in this case, again, speed, no, wow. Strength, defense, and plus one move, which are all important things. Um, so that's guard stance. There's also another mechanic with that, that if uh, after a certain number of turns or a certain number of battles, uh, you can tank a hit for free so you don't take any damage, uh, which is going to be very useful in a few other places. Justice! 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> really tipping the scales of justice here. <laughs> For justice. Okay, this is a bit of a problem. Um, Corn was supposed to take all those out, but she didn't have enough speed. There we go. There's a point of speed. Okay, that that helps a lot. I'm gonna move Silas out of the way here. And now all those enemies can attack Corn. This is a route chapter, so every unit I have to defeat every unit on this map. Um, so there are two enemies on the back bottom of the map. Um, I'm just gonna spam end turn because it's faster than moving my own units. <laughs> Effie's guaranteed to survive as long as they heal her once. Uh, actually. I'll just take you out just in case. You got 25 gold. I don't know why these notifications are popping up, but whatever. Your friends in the crowd. Hi, friends in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Spot passes on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm, this is where I'm going to start supporting J. Oh, dating world. Oh, new DLC is available. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we want to start building up a support between Korn and Jacob, and the higher, you, basically, you build up support points, the more you like spend time with that unit, like attack with them, heal them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, each support level we gain increases the stat boost, boost that Korn gets when Jacob pairs with her. And we kind of want a lot of, we kind of want them to max their support because Jacob gives a nice boost to like strength, defense, and skill when he's paired up with Korn on maximum. What's it called? Support points, yeah. When they're married, basically. Spoilers. 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 All right, so that green, this, these green tiles here is the staff range of the free staff, which is a staff that makes you not move for one turn. It's really annoying, so we're going to stay out of range of it. This chapter has a gimmick where, um, a side objective, more like, where if you visit up to, if you visit at least three villages in this chapter, then you get 10,000 gold, and we want that money very badly. So I already visited one of the villages on the left side. I mean, right side. Directions are difficult. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, she got speed, so that's, yeah. that helps. Nice. Um, there we go. We got some scrubs to help out. Thank you. At least here is a mounted unit, and her role is to be pretty much visit the two other villages on the left side. But yeah, otherwise we're just kind of blitzing up to the boss. Uh, whoops. And. The boss is actually surprisingly dangerous because he has a Nosferatu Tome, which um, allows, lets him heal himself when he eye attacks. So I don't want to actually attack him on player phase, otherwise he's going to heal himself. So hopefully Korn will kill him on an enemy phase and then not miss. And she did miss. Okay, so, um, 83%. There we go, we good. Nice. Yay. RNG. RNG. Uh, this game, as opposed to a few other earlier Prime Moon games, is not manipulated <clears throat> in any way. Uh, which unfortunately means that we can't get screwed on uh, stats. stats. I had yeah. a handful of backups <laughs> to mitigate it in case Korn gets like really screwed on certain stats, but I I don't want to resort to that. <laughs> yeah. Throughout because of that, it's <laughs> made it much safer. So. Okay, so this chapter is a seized chapter, and there's an enemy in this chapter which drops 3,000 gold, so we wanted to take him out. Um, hold on. Oh, that's a support menu. Did you know talking while um, speedrunning a Fire Emblem game is difficult? <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> thought? Yeah. Alright, so we have this girl here named Nyx. We're going to recruit her. Um, she's very old. That's her theme. She doesn't look old, but she's very old, apparently. Um, the goal of the chapter, she's going to help out break down this wall for us. Thank you. And the boss is in the middle. Um, there is a reinforcement zone we want to avoid. It's like around here, per se. And we don't want to hit it, otherwise there's going to be a bunch of units that spawn and kill Azura, who's kind of chilling on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it, we only trigger the reinforcement zone if you end the turn there. And my defense is too high for them to attack me. That's a problem. So in Conquest, if your defense is too high, <laughs> enemy units will not attack you. And that's bad, because I wanted all of those enemies to attack Korn. So I'm going to have to do this the manual way and take a bit of extra time on this. So um, t while I do this, we can read off a quick few donations while we wrap up this chapter. Absolutely. We have $100 from Gilded Royalty. It's a long-time viewer, first time donating. Fire Emblem is my all-time favorite series, and I can't wait to see what Kirby Master does to Three Houses next month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what I did there is just take out the unit, and then I hit the reinforcement zone now, but I can just seize to end, end the chapter with 3,000 gold. <clears throat> Okay, chapter 10. This is a very popular chapter, for good reason. In my opinion, it's one of the most coolest chapters in 
Fire Emblem in general is the Defend Chapter, which is funny because you wouldn't think a Defend Chapter. Jojo statue. <laughs> you, you wouldn't think a Defend statue Chapter would be interesting, but in this game, they did a good job of making one. All right, so I'm going to go to the armory and buy corn some goodies. Um, and then go to the staff store and pretty much spend all my money on tonics and stuff, goodies. Looking for, so looking we actually for something. Do have a ten dollar donation from Nolan one ninety two saying looking forward to see how you deal with chapter ten. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, yes, we're using almost all those <laughs> eighteen tonics. Okay, yeah, so we can squeeze in another quick donation while I prep. Sure, twenty dollars, twenty five dollars from Ice Lake. Hello from Mecca's Keep. Always glad to see you doing a run. <laughs> Shout out to Mecca. <laughs> okay, now support there. I'll safety save just in case. Okay, so I'm gonna reclass Corrin right now, and this is where her talent comes in. So her talent is set to ninja, and this allows us to reclass Corrin into a ninja. So ninjas are really nice, really good in this game because they have they use shurikens and knives, which are one to two range. And one to two range is very important because it allows us to counterattack, well, enemies that attack at one range and enemies that attack at two range. Did I just buy two bronze daggers? <laughs> okay, well, uh... Oh, here's food knife. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm, we'll figure it out later. Um, but yeah, so the nice thing about shuriken and knives is that they also debuff whatever they hit, lower their defense, which is handy for, like, defeating bosses and such. On top of that, while the ninja isn't super mobile, per se, it's like a classic infantry unit, the thing about the ninja class is that when the ninja pairs up with another unit, it gives the unit a plus one move bonus, which is really nice. Okay, so to go over this chapter, our goal, you see the four green tiles at the top. Our goal is to defend all four of those green tiles. And I'm going to zoom out the map so you, people have a better idea of what's going on here. So I'm, I want to do as little as possible to defend it, but I also, well, obviously don't want to lose it. <laughs> so I'm just going to like move some key units in specific spots. I visited a village with Niles to get a master seal, which allows me to reclass a tier one unit into a tier two unit. Silas take out, takes this guy out. And we also just got um, a two units and one um, unit, to say the least. Yeah, uh, her name is Camilla. She's kind of considered one, one of the best, probably the best character in, fate, in Fates, yeah. Conquest, for good reason, because her bases are ridiculous, her growths are ridiculous. She flies, she's in a fantastic class, she has good growths, and she gains experience at a faster rate than a normal pre-promoted unit. All right, so I'm going to take out these units with Corrin. Um, I'm gonna be, this, this is one of those chapters where there's a, like, a lot of improv going on, especially if your corn is like not fantastic and can't, fails to one-round KO a lot of units. Selena here is the girl right here on the, that my curse is on. She visited the village for more money. Niles, I forgot to give him a vulnerary. All right, but here we go. <laughs> we good. Okay, and we want to prioritize taking out the Sky Knights because the Sky Knights um, in this chapter, they prioritize going after the green tiles. They do not attack you directly for the most part. So, and they fly also, so we want to prioritize taking them out as much as possible. Take you out. Silas's levels don't really matter. That's a good level though. Um, yeah, I'll move you back here, I guess. Yeah, 19 HP, that's fine. I should heal you. You take out the Sky Knights. So Camila's role, as the only really good flyer we have, reliable flyer, I should say, she's going to take the role of taking out the Sky Knights in the map. Uh, this is a problem, because Corrin did not take these two units out. And these, this Sky Knight that's paired up will one-round my units, so I need to use the Freeze Staff to freeze them, and it's a 72 hit rate. And I missed, unfortunately, so... Oh, please don't miss again. Thank you for not missing. Good. So, I mean, it's annoying that I have, that I have to do that because it wastes a lot of time, but it's cool to show it off, I guess. You guess. I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, it's strength. So the freeze staff, as I mentioned before, it, it just freezes a unit in place for one turn. So it gives me a bit of time to like clean up a bit so that Corn has a clear shot at that Sky Knight next turn. Niles is level, don't matter. Yeah, and Niles is actually having a productive enemy phase because everyone around him is a... Um, Archer, and he counterattacks archers. Surprise, surprise. Okay, let's see. I'll dance for you. Okay, this is a really awkward situation because Corn did not kill units, but she's super bulky, so a lot of units actually didn't kill her. So this is all kind of stuff I'm not. I'm kind of completely improving right now. 
from you. I guess I'll throw you up. Oh. You have eight attack. As long as you don't miss, it's fine. Okay, we're good. Okay, so you take that guy out. This is not how chapter 10 normally goes, but hey, <laughs> it's improv. Yeah, generally in uh, Fire Emblem and other RPG speedruns, don't want to improv too much. Generally doesn't turn out well, but uh, yeah. Kirby's dealing with it pretty well. I must say I'm impressed. I, that's what happens if you play this chapter like 50 times in a row. <laughs> you practice it. I mean, I've probably done this crap before, I just don't remember it because I've just done this so many times. So this isn't a case of, that's never happened before. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Okay, let's throw you up there. We're not using really using Niles for the rest of the chapter. Um, so we oh, the water's gone now. That's a problem because that means a lot of grounded units can actually start going through this path here, and there's gonna be a bazillion units that try to charge us in that direction. Um, so we need to defend it. Please don't miss. Uh, you just missed. <laughs> Please don't miss. Thank you. Good. Oh, nice. this might be a problem because I forgot to bring Camilla up here. Hmm. You have. This is a slight problem. What's your attack range? Oh, actually, you know, you're you're just gonna blitz, but and seventeen freeze you, and we should we, that should be fine. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Um. So, so that's Sky Knight's one tile away yeah. <laughs> from having us restart the chapter. Yeah. <laughs> we're safe, we're safe. I forgot to move Camilla up, otherwise I would have had to use Camilla to clean them up, but... Hey, mistakes. And Corrin will just block this choke point off, and her strength is kind of lacking at the moment. Um, that should be the end of the chapter. There we Yay. go. Yay. Nice job. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> well, that was really slow, but... And oh well. <laughs> I mean, I'm also running this on the old 3DS, which is slower on loads, unfortunately. I've had a new 3DS capture, which is faster and much more comfortable ergonomically, but we've been having capture issues with that. So, unfortunately, and unfortunately, the person who manufactured it is kind of bankrupt. So, I can't get it repaired, which is unfortunate, but oh well. Can't be helped. Okay, so, um, don't deselect everyone this time. <laughs> 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 Okay, so this is kind of a grinding chapter. We have all these stairs we can go up. Um, and we're just gonna try to kill everything with Corn to give her as much experience as we can. We want her to end with around level 17 with roughly 40 experience by the end of the chapter. Because um, that will help guarantee that she will hit level 19 by the end of the next chapter. So no, no Mecca, I'm not promoting at level 20, don't worry. <laughs> Avoiding the pitfalls. Avoiding the pitfalls. Oh, oof, oof. Oof, that was a lot that... of damage. This is a bit of a problem. Okay, uh, I, she still can't use the bron fruit knife. Um, she should be fine. You could get Elise over there, I guess, if you really need to. Wait, but I put Elise on? No, that. Nah, nah, I'll, I'll be fine. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah, this is fine. I, I got the fruit knife. The fruit knife's a really nice fine. weapon, be, which Corrin can now use because her weapon rank went up. And a fruit knife allows her to equip it and heal for 10 HP, so it saves on healing resources, which is nice. Yeah, you only have five inventory slots, so uh, freeing up a space for like a vulnerator or something is really Get nice. Get strength! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is going to be like a grinding time here. So we can squeeze in a few donations while I just spam auto battle. Absolutely. Skipping screens. Skipping. We have $200 from Roland Zoni saying, as a speedrun fan and a Fire Emblems fan, I always get excited when I sir one on the schedule, especially when it's by my boy Kirby Master. I'm going to take the safe and get a more experience, but yeah, keep going with donations. $25 from Ash124. Hello, morning crowd. Fire Emblem is my favorite series, and I promised myself I'd donate for this run. Good luck to the runner. Oh, please get strength and speed. Speed. Oof. I may have to use the backup dragon herbs at this rate, because her strength is really lagging behind, but I'll manage for now. Okay. Uh, the next chapter coming up has an interesting gimmick. There's a bunch of pots on the chapter, and um, each pot is a medicine or a poison pot. When you destroy a pot, a medicine pot will give certain benefits to all units within two tiles, whether it's healing or stat boost or whatnot. And the poison pot does the opposite. Um, 
we don't care too much about it. We just want to get through the chapter as quickly as possible. So, um, did I support them? Ah, okay. Safety save, just in case. Uh, let's go. So we just got two new units. Lazo's role is to break this pot. Thanks. Shout out to all the Lazo fans. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Camilla's role is to help clear clear a path for Corin, because Camilla's like OP and stuff. So this is gonna be a bit problematic because Corin's really lagging behind on speed and str strength, so she's not gonna be one rounding some of these units that she should be unless I get lucky. Now I did not get lucky. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna have to wait another turn. Or I can get a crit or skill. That works. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have to burn another turn here. This corn is not very good, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so there's a Dragon Vein here. Receive Dragon Vein points, thanks. Um, and this Dragon Vein pops all pots on the map. And that's what we want because there's a bazillion pots in the way on to the boss, which is at the top. And we kind of want to go there as quickly as we can. Okay. That is not a good sign if Corrin can't one round a weekend. <laughs> Apothecary, but oh well. Yeah, she's not doubling Ryoma either, but we'll manage. I need to do a backup strat here to get everyone out of the way so I don't lose time. Please get strength speed. Let's go. Mm. It's speed. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, this is a little problematic because Corn with that with needs 18 strength. No, she needs 21 strength without the. Oh, it's Camilla bonus, so she needs 18 strength promoted. That's not going to be enough. Um, I'm going to promote her first and see how to and see what her stats look like. Oh yeah, marriage. Oh, this is a lot earlier than expected, but hey, we, 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 got, we got a couple here about to get married. <laughs> hey, Jacob, can you show me how you make that one tea that's kind of spicy? How you use milk? Certainly, my lady. You know, you've been sounding a bit distant lately. D did I offend you somehow? Oh, no, you, you could never... Are you all right? Do you have a fever? I've never seen your face so red. I knew it was only a matter of time before you realized something was wrong. Lady Jojo, I'm deeply sorry, but I can no longer serve as your butler. What? You've got to be joking. Just the other day, we were saying how we'll always stick together. Where is this coming from? I, I really did do something to offend you, didn't I? You, ha you have my oath that that's not the case. It's, it's just that. Huh? <laughs> I can't hear you when you mumble, Jacob. I, I've, I've, I've fallen in love with you. Jacob. However, it is not proper for a butler to love his mistress. As such, I must ask to be reassigned to new duties far away from you, my lady. No! Uh, out of the question! I can't imagine going through each day without you. I need you, Jacob. I, mm, my lady? I, I love you too. <laughs> what? What do you mean? What, what do you mean? What do I mean? I've always liked you, of course, but... Recently, you've come to mean so much more to me. I, I must be dreaming. There's no other explanation for this. Only in my dreams would Lady Jojo look at me this way, with her cheeks all fluffed. Will you stop it? You're embarrassing me. Besides, you're just as red as I am. Anyway, request granted. You are hereby fired as my butler. Would you consider being my <laughs> husband instead? Yes! Uh, I, I mean, if it pleases your... I, I, I mean, yes! I would like nothing more than to be your husband. And we'll be together always. Woo! <laughs> so yeah. We, we, ju we just had a promotion. We just had a proposal on SGDQ. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never seen before. No, nope, never seen before. <laughs> All right. Um, so we got to promote Corin, And I think she needs 18 strength for the strat to work. If not, I'm going to go back and use Dragon Herbs. One off. Mm, I'm gonna use Dragon Herbs right now. This is not good, <laughs> say the least. Okay, so the Dragon Herbs are kind of a pseudo DLC thing. Um, if you have all the pads, you can use these Dragon Herbs, which permanently increases all your stats by plus one. But since this corn's been really lagging behind on some of her stats, I'm gonna resort to using those now before they cause way too many problems to the point of well, yeah, yeah, resetting over and over and over again due to bad stats. And even with the, with the Dragon Herbs, this Corrin still doesn't have, won't have fantastic strength, so that's a bit of a problem. 
but we'll manage. Um, on the plus side, or minus side, this corn has, is very bulky, which is actually bad in this chapter, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, because as I said before, if your defense is too high, a lot of enemies just won't attack you. Uh, oh, Arthur, what are you doing there? This isn't a justice chapter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, 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 that kind of messed up my ordering. You oh. there. <laughs> justice! <laughs> no justice. No justice for you. All right, so Nyx is going to be used here to, as a pair up bot for Camilla and equip Camilla with a thunder. The entire point of that is so that Camilla has a 1 to 2 range weapon equipped, but her resistance is so high that no one's going to attack her. And we don't want anyone to attack her because we want all these units to attack Kaze instead, who has a steel shuriken. So all these mages are going to get themselves killed, get themselves killed on Kaze in this route chapter. I'm going to zoom out the map so you can all see what's going on on the overall map. That is a little unfortunate. Um, I'm going to have to keep the fruit knife equipped. Corrin wanted to kill everything there, but she, her strength is still bad, so she didn't. And Camilla's role is to snipe that boss there and also take out the cavaliers that are going to come up the bridge. Laszlo, Laszlo fans, um, is pretty useful because he has a respectable strength stat with an FE pair up and a strength tonic and strong repost, which gives him plus three damage when he attacks at, um, what's it called? On enemy phase. On enemy phase, he does plus three damage. And that's just enough for him to one round all those knights. Uh, this is a little awkward. I'm just going to auto battle. Hope it works out. <laughs> uh, you're not paired up. Okay, good. Uh, Yato. So Camilla is going to stand next to Korn because she has a skill called Rose's Thorns. It allows Korn to do plus three damage to all these units, which she needs to one round everything. And if I don't end the chapter on this turn, then I'm going to lose a lot of time because reinforcements are going to start to spawn. And when I trigger the boss to, into attacking me, um, that's also going to spawn a bunch of reinforcements. And this is a route chapter, so everything needs to die. <laughs> that, that level up, though. I really missed this guy, so that is unfortunate. Um, so I'm gonna lose a lot of time from this. A fruit knife. Uh, this is awkward. You run away. Guess you'll debuff. A little unfortunate, I have to resort to this. Um, I mean, I can auto battle that. Take them out. Nope. Nice. All right. Laszlo! So yeah, I just lost about like two minutes there, unfortunately. But hey, that's what happens with unmanipulated Fire Emblem Run sometimes. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're so much more interesting. <laughs> so this corn is still a little defense screwed. And this is a short chapter. So if corn doesn't get defense on a level up here, I may actually reset because our strength is actually that bad at the moment, even though her strength was roughly 65 to 70%. So, yeah, it can't be helped, though. So. Um, support with Camila. Uh, you, 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 you. Steel Shuriken, safety save. Okay, so this is a defeat boss chapter, and there's a lot of terrain to navigate through, but we're just going to fly over all of it by pairing <laughs> up with Camila. The boss is in the upper right corner of the map, and there's also conveniently a chest at the top of the map. So we're going to have Corrin open it up because she has she, she can also serve as a thief thanks to her ninja class, so she can open up chests. And it has a Seraph Rope, which gives her a plus 5 HP boost. It would have been nice if it was an energy drop because her strength's bad, but oh well. Oh, rip. F. F. Pour one out for... Mm. Pour one out for Keton. Okay. This corn is very bulky, so I should be able to just attack the boss safely. Um, oh, yeah, no, easy. Take the archer out. Uh, that doesn't matter, actually. <laughs> I, it it kind of wastes time if he does, but oh well. Uh, I'll keep it, because he got a lot of other stats, but that's iffy. That is very iffy. Okay, well... We'll manage. Okay. I have some notes, and my notes for chapter 15 just says skip. So it gives me some time to just scroll through my notes <laughs> conveniently enough. Skipping dot dot dot. <laughs> okay. Well, safety save just in case Corn gets the love. So this is also a short chapter. We're, we just entered a place that we can't talk about. Um, if we're not in it, so we're just not going to talk about it. <laughs> Otherwise, we like vanish. Wait, where, where are we? I, I, I don't know what we're talking about. Huh? What? What did you say? Where, I, don't, where I, don't are we I don't know what we're saying. 
<laughs> but yeah, this is, chapter has a really cool gimmick where you can duplicate your units and like have them also work on the bottom of the map, like down here. Unfortunately, it's just way slower to do that because it gives you a lot of things that would be nice but cost too much time to get. So I'm just gonna beat the chapter quickly and blitz it out of here. Okay. Oh, Corn didn't level up there. Okay, so this next chapter coming up, we just got a new unit named Xander. He's really good also. He is not very fast, but he's mobile and very, very, very bulky and has a one to two range weapon. He's going to be useful for some chapters here and there, um, including this one. So Xander, so this chapter is a defeat boss chapter, but um, the thing about this chapter is, oops, the thing about this chapter is that there are four green units, and we have to talk to the last green. You have to talk to all four of them, and the last green unit you talk to will turn into the boss. On top of that, we also are sort of on a timer um, because each turn you spend loses you 300 gold from the money you would win otherwise at the end of this chapter. I think you start like with 10,000 gold at the start of this chapter, and you lose like 300 with each turn, something like that. All right, please get strength. Strength! Yay. Yes. <laughs> All right, so Camilla, so Xander's role is to take out an archer that would otherwise just kill Camilla. Um, and also just eat up the free staff that's nearby so Camilla doesn't get frozen. So bows are effective against flyers, if you didn't know. And weapons that are effective against someone has triple the mites, which makes them very dangerous. So for example, if a bow had 10 mites and you used it to attack a, what's it called? A flyer, then it would have 30 mites on them and usually one-shot them. That's going to be important for us to note in later chapters because we're going to be taking advantage of effective weapons yes, later on. 30 on top of the strength. On top of the strength as well, yeah. So like the might of the weapon is treated as if it had 30 might instead of 10. So we're going to talk to this guy. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> boots? Yeah, he, his name is Boots. He's just saying Boots! Exclamation points. <laughs> Hi, Boots. So like this guy is really greedy, and if we recruit him, strength. Good level up. Good level we should, up. We should have had a poster with strength across it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a backpack here with markers, and if you want to write one right now. All right, throw one here. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, here, here. I got a backpack. It's 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 like one of the zippers. All right. I gotta run, so I can't <laughs> waste too much time on it. So yeah, if you recruit Shura, um, he doesn't have the common sense to take off his boots and give them to you. So we we have to just kill him to get his pair of boots. Sorry. All right, so when you hit certain chapter benchmarks, you can upgrade buildings to the higher tier, um, including your Jojo statue. And you know what? I'll just do it fun. Jojo statue! Um, it's not really going to do anything for us, though. <laughs> That's okay. So we're going to buy some goodies. Um, for for Corrin, we're going to buy a killing edge with her, which has a higher crit rate. Um, and a hunt, hunter's knife, which is effective against mounted units and beast units. Effective at beast units. Xander's gonna buy the Armor Slayer and the Beast Killer, which is kind of what they sound like. They're effective against armored units and beast units, respectively. Okay. So, this is a chapter where I normally have Corrin and Jacob marry. So, the fact that Corrin and Jacob married so much earlier means the run was not going very well because they spent so much time attacking together for the extra turns. But oh well, it's okay. <laughs> Oh, I already married them. I just talked about it. I was like checking if they can keep her married. Or not. <laughs> okay, okay, good job, me. So yeah, normally I would marry them now, and then I wouldn't just not use Jacob in this chapter because instead I'm going to use Gunter. So I'm going to talk about Jacob and Gunter's um, skill, which is pretty important in this run actually. So Jacob, the reason I've been using Jacob for the majority of the run, aside from his awesome reclass option and support bonuses, is that he has a skill called Evasive Partner. And Evasive Partner, what it does is if he's paired with Corn, he gives Corn a plus three defense and resistance boost, and also plus 15 avoid boost, <laughs> which is really significant for, avo for survival. Gunter is the opposite, where he gives Corrin a plus 15 attack hit rate boost and a plus three attack boost. And a hit rate boost is, I'm actually using Gunter primarily for the hit boost because if I use Jacob in this chapter, Corrin's gonna have roughly 60 to 70 hit rate on the boss. Whereas with Gunter, she's gonna have roughly 90 hit, and that is just gonna be much more reliable. So there's a green unit running around here, if you haven't noticed. Um, we want him to survive, because if he survives, he gives us a speed wing. He's still alive. He's being like, I'm a green unit all the time, and getting himself killed. All right. Oh, she can't even double. 
Oh my no. god. Uh, should I go for it? Should I go for it? Let's go for it. Yeah. Killing it. Ooh, okay. This is scary because uh, Corrin can easily. No. Oh. Oh, Corrin can easily die here. Okay, no, she, we're good. We're good. Yay. She didn't die. Strength. Yeah! <laughs> uh, nine, 18 minutes. <laughs> Can't underestimate. Oh, we'll manage. We'll manage. <clears throat> All right, so this chapter is a defeat boss chapter. We have like three bosses to defeat. And where I'm going to have Korn take out the bosses at the top and Xander at the bottom. And this is where the armor slayer is going to come in really handy here. Because um, there, are, there are some units that have a skill called Wary Fighter. And Wary Fighter makes it so that other units, like neither unit, the unit with the Wary Fighter and the unit attacking the Wary Fighter user, cannot double attack. That's annoying. With the armor slayer, Xander can two shot them, which is the best we can really hope for. But yeah, otherwise I'm just gonna have Corrin go up and take out this boss and Xander go down to take down this boss here. So we can squeeze in a few donations here while I blitz through this chapter. Great, we have a ton of them coming in <laughs> from that yeah, uh, wedding performance. <laughs> We got $50 to Mellow119. That dramatic reading of the S support was amazing. Thank you for blessing us with that performance. May RNG be ever in your favor. <laughs> $25 from Grand Duke Belt. Happy wedding day. So I, uh, I forgot to bring a gift for Lady Jojo and Jacob. So I'll donate instead. <laughs> and $10 from Anon128. I bet you never knew Fire Emblem Fates had the best voice acting of 2019. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Strength and spear! Oh! Woo! Woo! Well, that's, that's... Wait, that's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> strength! No skipping the strength play. <laughs> ah, they were skipping anyways. <laughs> and Kirby, I do have to jump in once more. We do have $10,000 from the Yeti. Wow. Let's go! Congratulations. Thank you, Yeti. Hey, y'all. Yeti here. Here's another $10,000 for MSF. Thanks to all of your orders and support. We'd love to give a special shout out to all the GDQ staff and volunteers. You all make this event better every dang year. Thank you for all your hard work. All right. The next chapter coming up is a route chapter with a bunch of kitsune or foxes or whatever you want to call them. And we They're annoying. Yeah, we don't want to be outfoxed here. <laughs> <laughs> They are annoying <laughs> because um, it's a route chapter and they only attack at one range, and they kind of hit hard, they're very dodgy. And most significantly, they have this gimmick where they can illusion. And when they illusion, they can't attack you, but you can't attack them. So it doesn't sound that bad, right? Um, the problem is, they change, their, they change their illusion state at the start of the enemy phase. So that means you can't, I mean, you can sort of predict what they're gonna do, but. It's not, it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> and they also hit Korn very hard, and unfortunately, Korn's defense is actually really good, so a lot of them are actually not going to attack her, so we're going to lose even more time from this Korn who doesn't like to cooperate. But, well, I'd rather have a bulky Korn than a non-bulky Korn, to be fair. We're going to use a Beast Killer and Xander and the Beast Hunter's Knife with Korn, because they're effective on all these units. Strength! <laughs> nice. All right, so Xander, we don't want him to... He's, Xander's going to get another level up here. We don't want him to get defense. Otherwise, he's, a lot of units aren't going to attack him. Strength? Strength? <laughs> strength? 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 strength. <laughs> uh, this is a little awkward. I'm just going to... Yeah, these units, a lot of these units aren't attacking her, so... This might be a little awkward. Yeah, if they don't attack, we need to pick them off one by one yeah. on player phase, which is uh, not... Fast. And remember, we want the game to do as much as possible for us, because this is one of the laziest speedruns ever. Strength! Oh my god! Oh, let's go! Let's go! Woo! RNG, yeah. RNG bless! A little late, but you know. <laughs> Alright, but yeah. Um, while I just spam auto battle here one by one, because Coronan is too defense blessed, we can also squeeze in some more donations here. Absolutely. We have $10 from Floorman. Fire Emblem has long been one well, of my favorite series ever since I first played Radiant Dawn. I'm so very much looking forward to seeing Kirby Master destroy this game and of course, to marry our dear Jojo to the best husband in the game. <laughs> we have a $500 donation Woo! from Red Apple. Let's go. No comment, but thank you so much for your generosity. And also $15 from Flantasy Flan. So hype for the KH3 run. Gotta put my money towards that level one critical mode, Dark Inferno. Good luck to the runners and thanks to GDQ for always putting on an awesome show for the best of reasons. 
And just as a reminder, we do still need almost $20,000 to meet that incentive. So let's get those, let's get those donations in. Oh, what are you doing? This one... <laughs> no, Xander, go after it! <laughs> Auto battle! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs> this is Yay. why I hate this chapter! So that's a good showcase of what illusion can do. Yeah, that's a good showcase of what I, This run is honestly, it's kind of a good showcase of everything that can go wrong. <laughs> oh no. Make Unf it's, I mean, it's both good and bad. Bad because like my estimate was honestly a little too aggressive. So we'll, I'm going to try to blitz through this as quickly as we can at this point. But I think this corner is catching up. So we're, we're, should, we should be good. Um, What was it? Stat booster, speed strength tonic. So this chapter has an interesting gimmick with this wind vents. Um, a lot of people hate this chapter. I don't know why. I, I, I have no idea why people would hate this chapter. Because, like, you can just do this. Camilla's going to get blown up by five tiles thanks to the gimmick of this chapter. And then we're at the, we're at the throne room in the seas chapter. Yay. All right. We're actually going to unpair Camilla here because we want the option to seize with Camilla on the turn after this if Korn doesn't finish the boss off on enemy phase. But she did, so we're good. All right. Chapter 21. All right. So my notes for Chapter 21, it doesn't say skipping dot dot dot, unfortunately, but Aww. it does say keep Camilla, which is pretty <laughs> straightforward. <clears throat> so in, my, in the, my notes for Birthright, which is probably the simplest run overall, and I really am thankful I'm not running that, it's basically, half of my notes are basically keep Corrin and Ryoma, and keep Corrin and Ryoma, like for half the chapters. <laughs> That's basically my notes. <laughs> okay. So this chapter, the goal of this chapter is to escape with every unit you deploy. So this chapter kind of emphasizes, um, not emphasizes, what's it called? En encourages you to... Low man, this chapter um, encourages. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Which vocabulary is difficult. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and these enemies kind of hit hard, and there's some enemies that can attack you at like five range. But I'm spamming these dragon veins here that we can fly to to freeze all the units in place for one turn. So very few units. What? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that. No one I, saw I, that. I, no one saw that. No one saw that. First Wait. try. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> First try. Let's go. <laughs> so I forgot to switch to core in there. And. I knew it was possible for Camille to die, but I've never seen it happen before. So that's never happened before. First there's try. A, there, first, there's the first yeah, try. The, the, there's a, that's yeah. never happened before. <laughs> yeah, there's a, that's never happened before. So while I redo this chapter, which should take like 30 seconds, um, we can read off another few donations. Okay, we have $100 from Kuroi Tsubasa Tenshi. Not having to restart Chapter 10 hype. <laughs> Always glad to see a Fire Emblem run supporting the good doctors. Keep up the good work. And fifty dollars from Rollinman one eight nine. Yo, Rollinman one here. I have never played Fire Emblem Fates. Hey, hey, hey Rollinman. <laughs> but happy to see Kirby Master beating another Fire Emblem game to pieces. Hope you get good luck, by the way. Nice avatar, uh, Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of good luck, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Corn apparently has a sister that just died. Wait. Aww. Someone. I, I don't know her name though, because she only showed up like once in this game. Aww. She has miracle. <laughs> she has miracle. <laughs> Oh, this chapter is named Sakura. I wonder who we're going to fight. Hmm. Uh, hmm. No idea. Can't, can't, can't. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll fight Camilla. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, 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 you. And we're going to keep Gunter because we need the extra offense from his forceful partner skill for this chapter. Especially since this corn is still... Normally she should be like close to capping on strength, but her, she's a little, still a little behind on that, even despite the good levels but I think she'll be fine at this point. She's not as strength screwed as the um, practice run I did, thankfully. It was just saying a lot. Hey, there we go. Strength and speed. Woo! Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the fruit knife so I can heal because marathon strats. Okay. But yeah, so the, I think like almost every chapter from here on out is a seize chapter where you have to like go to the boss, defeat them, and then seize. And we're kind of reaching pretty much at the near the late game of the portion of the run, like the last fourth. We're actually fighting like the Norian nobles. No, Hoshida nobles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we can fully upgrade our staff store. And the staff store 
when fully upgraded, sells a stat one of each stat booster. Guess what we're gonna buy? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Can we get a strength in the audience when I buy it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, I heard that orbs were kind of a meme. Oh yeah, I can't buy build orbs here. Oh, I can't, never mind. That's probably a revelation thing. I was gonna build fire orbs, but you, you, oh, you can't. Okay, um. Watch its HP. <laughs> four. Skill tonic. Three, four. Um, Seraphrobe. Energy drop. Woo hoo! Actually, I forgot one thing. What do you want? What do you want? I'm gonna buy a heart seal. You'll see what I'll use it for. Okay, chapter 23. So this chapter is where we fight Takumi for um, the third time. <clears throat> I think. Might be the fourth. The fourth time, actually. Yes, yeah, the fourth time we fight him. I don't know why I'm supporting with Gunter. M muscle memory. Um, energy drop. Yes. Okay, skill. Strength. Um, and Camila. Jacob. Oh, Brooke. My, or my unit menu is so messed up because um, Leo died. <laughs> So that's throwing everything off. But hey, it's okay. So yeah, um, we're supposed to kind of go all the way around this map, take the stairs and get up to Takumi here, but we're just gonna fly up there instead. So we're, we're gonna fly up with Camila first, have Camila fly Corn up there. And we have Baruka, another flyer, to fly Jacob up there so we can get Jacob with her wife. Strength! Strength! We just got a really important skill, by the way, called Shuriken Fair. Basically, you deal fi plus five damage when you're using a Shuriken which we kind of desperately need. <laughs> okay, so basically I just want to plow through here, kill everything, and then... Yeah. So, we can read we some donations here while we get more strength. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We have $250 from Midnight Blazing Heart. Thanks, Midnight. First time donating to SGDQ. I'm super excited to see this Fire Emblem Fates run. Good luck to all the runners out there. A little, luck for the good, a little late for the good luck, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but luck on that counts. All right, one more. And we have $100 from Kate the Grey. I wanted to donate during KH3 since that series has meant so much to me throughout my life, but I figured I could accelerate things and hope that we can get that level one boss incentive. Best of luck to all the runners, and thanks to the whole GDQ crew for such a fantastic event. Less than three. Less than three. Less than three. Um, so... I was going to say something related to the donation, but I just forgot it. Oh well. <laughs> okay, so... We, let's, yeah, just squeeze, squeeze in one more donation while I prep this. Uh, $100 from PX Micaiah. Hey, PX. Hey, Thanks. PX. Hey, Kirby. I'd wish you good luck on, your, on this run, but your corn <laughs> seems blessed enough. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the good work you're doing, everybody at SGDQ. And remember, if corn gets critical by Lucina, you're playing the wrong game. <laughs> And one more. Oop. $50 from Shiro Desu Desu. Fire Emblem is my favorite game series. Spent countless hours playing almost every game in this series. Crazy to see this being destroyed in less than an hour. Good luck with the rest of your run. Okay, so in this chapter, Hinoka, there's a dragon vein in this chapter where all flyers gain plus four move. So Camilla is running, flying around with 13 move, and all non-flyers lose some move. And we have Nyx here running here to be a lure for a bow user. So rest in peace, Nyx. Bye, Nyx. Yeah. Um, we have to do that, otherwise the bow user would bop Camilla and just kill her. So our inventory is full right now. So we're gonna take out, uh, yeah, we're gonna take out Hinoka with the hunter's knife. Um, and she's gonna drop a speed wing. But since our inventory is full, the game's gonna be like, send something to convoy, please. Um, and we're gonna send a hunter's knife to convoy and have the killing edge equipped instead, which is much more reliable for taking out the unit paired behind her. So basically, normally you can't change what you, every equipment you have during enemy phase, but that's kind of a way to do it. So convoy shenanigans. Did we just get a zero level up? Yeah, yeah, we did. Okay. Um, corn's strength is capped, I think. Okay. Thirty-two is her strength cap with the um, corn. Oh. I'm not corn. Whatever her name is, statue, Jojo statue. <laughs> <laughs> Four minutes to finish the run. I think we got this. We got three chapters. Three chapters left, I think. <laughs> All right. So we. This is where we have to fight Ryoma, the Prince of Hoshido. Um, and he's actually really bulky. He's very fast. We need cap speed to actually to double, with a speed tonic to double attack him, which we do, thankfully. Um, so speed, skill, strength. Okay. No. 
We want we want a Dragon Fang. Dragon Fang has a three quarters time skill chance of activating, which is roughly like 30%, I think. And we also crits are also nice. We're gonna use a killing edge here now. Oh, I forgot animations. Oh, that works! Yay! <laughs> Double crit! <laughs> Woo! Nice level. <laughs> Quality level up. <clears throat> so this is the most complicated chapter coming up here. Um, this is a thieves chapter that we have to kind of go all the way around the map. And there's an the boss has three staves which are annoying. He alternates between them every turn. So every three turns, he's going to alternate between um, Enfeeble, which is really bad. It lowers all our stats by um, four. And then, and then he uses Freeze, which freezes us to one, for one turn. And then he has, uses Silence, which doesn't matter. Um, so we need to, I need to like calculate what staff is he going to use next to avoid Enfeeble at whenever possible. Um, and to avoid freeze whenever possible too, but I can't avoid them all the time. Okay, so Draco Shield, thank you. And this is a scary chapter because enemies hit very hard here and it's really important to just die. Um, hey. All right. So turn one. So, he, so this is the boss. He has this staff range and feeble freeze and silence. So right now he would use unfeeble. We, should, we actually want him to use here because we want all these heroes to get themselves killed on Corrin. And for that, for him to do that, Corrin's defense needs to be lowered. And now he would use freeze when I'm outside of his range. <laughs> wow. Sad. Uh, now he uses silence, which you don't care about. So we don't want to enter that range right now, otherwise he would enfeeble us. So I'm going to use this turn to heal up. I actually, I'm just using vulnerary. And now he would use um, freeze. Whew. Uh, I, I'm going to play it safe. Now he would use silence. And I hope to complete the path clear. Yes, it is. And now he will use enfeeble, but now I'm out of, outside of his green staff range. All right, that's enfeeble. Turn nine. Is, turn nine is freeze. So now it's going to be turn ten. So he uses enfeeble. Oof. Uh, elixir. Eleven is freeze. Next twelve. Next turn is enfeeble. So I don't want to enter his range right now. So I'll take you out. And feeble, go here, set that up. Freeze, your enemy's over, take out this boss. Thank you for not missing. He uses freeze on us, we can't really do anything about it. And now we open the door here. Hopefully Iago, not Iago, uh, is Iago? Yeah, Iago, hopefully he doesn't crit us. <laughs> okay, thank you for not critting us. <laughs> All right, done. So now we're on to the last chapter of the, of the run. <laughs> that chapter is really intense, as you can tell by like Corn almost dying like four times. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm as a safety strat. I, as a safety strat, I know this is gonna waste time, but I'm, as a safety strat to make sure I can finish the run, I'm gonna go ahead and sell some stuff and get another stat booster just for safety's sake. Uh, I don't need you. I don't need you. And I don't need you. Okay. Oh, I need, I need 1,000 gold. There we go. So yeah, th th this is this is gonna cost me time, but like I'd rather finish this first run. I'm getting another dragon shield just to build up Corn's bulk more because she is. Yeah, the la very last chapter it can be very scary. Let me say that. All right, last chapter. We're about to wrap this up. Okay, so now we fight King Garon, who, spoiler alert, is a bad guy possessed. Oh my god. Um, no, one saw this one no one saw this coming. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna safety save just in case. Uh, skill speed. Uh, did I use a dragon shield? Wait, where did. You did, yeah. I did use. Okay, okay, okay. Are you ready for some justice? Are you ready for justice? <laughs> Woo! For justice! Minus one string. Oh, I forgot something. Okay, I'm glad I remember this just now before I started the chapter. 
Because this is also, um, I already grabbed the bonuses here, so, you know, let's get some more boots. <laughs> Technically not really allowed in, like, a vanilla speedrun, but we're in a marathon setting. I, it's whatever. New Game Plus. <laughs> Got a finished run. Yeah, New Game Plus, totally. Okay, come on. This is, <sighs> old 3DS loads are so slow! If you're used to practice on a new 3DS, you really feel the loading differences. It sucks. <laughs> Come on, loads. Come on. I guess I'll safety save again just in case something goes wrong. Oop. Here, have a boots. One boots. One boots. <laughs> All right, so we got Arthur on the team. Woo! Uh, separate you there. So this is a defeat boss chapter. We just have to kind of go up and beat up Garon. Uh, Shadow Yato. Okay, didn't take too much damage, so that's good. Uh, go here. I, want... I have six concussions. I'm fine. I'll just heal. All right, Garon fight. He's kind of a pushover because his hit rate's not very good against us. He doesn't even two shot us, and we also dodged anyways. Show me what you've got. Evil shall not prevail! <laughs> Alright. Here we go. The last hit on Garon. Time is not coming up, by the way. You haven't seen my true final form. Takumi! <laughs> <laughs> because fates. Okay, so this chapter is surprisingly scary because Korn has to take on a really lengthy enemy phase, and I just need to kind of blitz it down to Takumi and beat him up. And this is a scary one, because this is why I got the Dragon Shield for Korn to help her with her bulk. Because it's very scary and it's possible for her to just die here. So we'll see, we'll see how it works out. Come on. Unfortunately, you can't save before this chapter, which is, yeah, yeah annoying. Okay. Whoop. All the tonics, because we actually need every single one of them. Uh, that's my last elixir. I have to keep that in mind. Uh... Are you ready for some justice? For justice! Yes. Woo! Justice will prevail. <laughs> for justice! justice. Uh, I'm actually gonna use a different. I'm actually gonna use a fruit knife for just for more avoid. Rip. Aww. Aww. Rip. Aww. Aww. Come on. Justice! Justice. <laughs> okay, she survived. She survived. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, heal up a bit. That's a scary turn, and now we should be good. So time will be coming up soon-ish. Um, uh, I should heal here. Concoction. Shadow Yato, concoction. No match for us! Ha 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 ha! No damage. Oof. Uh, 18, yeah, that's fine. I won't let you down! I won't let you down. Oh, use, useless lethality, let's go! Woo! Nice way to finish the run. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time will come, come up. Uh, loads, 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 loads. Just kidding. Oh, we might as well just call time. So we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, we're done. First try, let's go. Shoutouts to Joe. Shout outs to Arthur who fights for justice. Justice! For justice! 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 All right, um, I know we're short on time, but I'm just gonna give a really quick shout out to the couch for cooperating and writing all these po silly posters for us. <laughs> How about we give them a quick round of applause for all the memes? For the memes! For the memes. <laughs> um, this run wouldn't have been possible without 
Kyo, Yukio, Gwenpich, all the people in the Fire Emblem community. This route was originally by Yukio, a Japanese runner. I made a lot of alterations to it, but the core route was thanks to Yukio, and which was built off of Kyo's right there on the couch. No, not Kyo, someone else. Yeah, well, no, so, I'm uh, awakening. No, <laughs> Ontario, Ontario, there you go, Ontario, yeah. Um, but there are other people I'd like to give a shout out to, but um, we're short on time. So thanks for having me up here. Um, this is a good showcase of everything that can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I still wasn't too far overestimate, so we're good. It's really because of old 3 DS loads. The old 3 DS loads. Yeah. Yeah, blame the old 3 DS loads. Thanks a lot, everyone. Minutes. Thanks a lot. We will be right back after the sponsored ad break. It's tank top season. 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 Best Buy is the destination for all PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC gaming needs. Best Buy carries exclusive physical limited run games, including the upcoming Celeste and Toe Jam and Earl. Pre-order Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield at Best Buy and get $10 in rewards. And pre-order Cyberpunk 2077 at Best Buy and get one of three exclusive steelbooks. Welcome back to SGDQ 2019, which is powered by Twitch. We have a $15 donation from Zaki2. If Twitch chat all donated $5, we would meet that Kingdom Hearts 3 incentive with money to spare. $10 would get us the bonus game 4 with money to spare. Can we get a donation hype train started? And with that, I do want to just let people know we still need almost $20,000 for the Kingdom, 3 Heart, or Kingdom Hearts 3 incentive, and we need a hundred grand for that Super Mario Brothers 3 race. And both of those, are you really, really, really want to see those. So let's get those donations in ASAP.
We have $200 from Jacob249. I've followed GDQs for years, and this year, working in a hospital, I'm only even happier to donate while on my way to becoming a doctor. Kingdom Hearts was a game I grew up with, and it is only appropriate to donate now. Thanks for everyone at the event, and keep being awesome. And with that, we're going to go over to Scent for some prizes. What's up? I'm going to rapid fire. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019. My name is Scent, and of course, I am here to show you guys some amazing prizes you can win uh, from now by donating from now, from now until the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. You, it's a pretty long run. You got some time to get those donations in, but you're going to want to get those donations in, especially because we really want to see that Dark Inferno incentive met. They're going to do it at level 1. They're going to do it on critical mode. This is a crazy super boss. You guys got to see it, but we still need about $17,000 throughout the course of the run to make it happen. All right, let's talk about some of that stuff you could put those donations towards. Like, hey, for a $15 minimum donation, you could get this beautiful pizza time print uh, from our friends over at Beanie Coffee Illustrations. I, I love it. It's pizza time anytime, especially when you have the turtles on your side. That's what I like. Uh, we have this beautiful set of three Cuphead Amigurumis, $15 minimum donation from our friend uh, Saint Tenth. Um, again, amazing story behind these Amigurumis. They were actually knitted in the audience at SGDQ last year, which is just, it's super cool. Like, when does that ever happen? I don't know. They're also wonderfully detailed. Their heads are actually uh, hollow, you can see inside there, which is just a, a wonderful touch that I love. And of course, we got Miss Chalice to go along with them. Beautiful $15 donation for the set of three uh, from our friend Janelle Guman. We have a uh, beautiful Vanitas print. Um, this thing is massive and it is so detailed. You're going to want to go over to gamesdonequick.com, check out the tracker for a beautiful picture of it. $25 minimum donation until the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. You got to get those donations in soon. We have so many amazing prizes. From Wolf and Wares, we have uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Wayfinder Trio keychains based off the keychains of the three main protagonists of the Kingdom Hearts series. $5 minimum donation. Uh, from our good friend Doug, we have a beautiful Mothwing shawl based on the Mothwing Shawl of Hollow Knight. $10 minimum donation. From Jeremy Parrish, we have an excellent copy of Nestworks Volume 2 detailing the rise of the Nintendo Entertainment System and the revitalization of the video game industry that's led to its boon today. $10 minimum donation. Uh, from our friends over at New Wave Toys, we have some amazing 12-inch uh, tall replica arcade cabinets of Centipede and Tempest. They look super cool, but my favorite part is they are fully functional cabinets. You can play Centipede on a cabinet that's just about yay tall off the ground, and um, it, it works. It's great. I love it. It's a $25 minimum dollar donation, and a huge shout out to New Wave Toys for sending that out to us. Uh, guys, we have so many amazing prizes. If you want to know more about them, you're going to want to head over to gamesdonequick.com. You're going to want to check out the tracker because it's going to have all the information you need on upcoming speedruns, on upcoming prizes, and how close we are to getting that Dark Inferno incentive met. Um, now, guys, we do have a wonderful interview waiting for us with Kung Fu and Kirby Master, but I think there is one more prize we need to discuss, and that prize is the friends we made along the way in Fire Emblem together. Or at least the friends we would have made if you guys had donated for Revelations. We did Conquest, and y'all have to live with that. Uh, why, why did you... He was, he was trying to... He wanted to donate for an awful GDQ. What's wrong with him? Oh, oh, man. Okay, so let's get into that. But first off, hey, guys. Kung Fu back here. I'm hanging out with Kirby Master, who just finished up his Fire Emblem Fates run. And I think you did a great job, especially having to deal with... <laughs> I agree! <laughs> especially having to deal with... Um, a lot of crazy RNG and unfortunate luck. So, uh, first of all, why? So, what makes Conquest the favorite for you then? Um, well, Conquest is usually considered the best of the three routes because it's kind of the hardcore Fire Emblem with generally, <laughs> not always, cough, cough, foxes. Um, generally, solid map design and it's a lot more strategic, really clever unit placements, things like that. Um, and it is. I would have been fine with Conquest or Revelation because Revelation is notoriously terrible. Um, <laughs> but it, the speedrun for Revelation is also it's interesting in its own right. As long as it wasn't Birthright, because Birthright is literal. Like we joke about black screen and the spam auto battle. Birthright is literally spam that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this the goal of almost every map is kill every enemy. So auto battle, auto battle, auto battle. 
That's bar, that's the birthright speed run. Oh, okay. You just heard it. You just saw it. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Okay, great preview. That was a good speed run. Of yeah, it. yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> that's three second, three second world record. <laughs> okay, so along with this run, of, you know, it's heavy, heavy on the RNG for you. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that you had to, like, I noticed in chapter ten that was especially tricky. Uh, what are some some things that you have to remember to do, or some things that you can kind of use to be able to handle this kind of RNG, especially with the marathon? Yeah, um, I'm glad. Well, first, I'm glad I actually finished a run because, <laughs> like, it is possible for a run to be incompletable due to a bad core, and even with like all the backups I had in mind, um, I devised like a handful of backups, which I used pretty much all of them, and it worked out thankfully. Um, in ter- I, it just kind of kind of comes down to knowing all the tools you have, and with a non-manipulated run when routing it. At least for me, I generally try to route it so that I always have a backup option if convenient or if... I try, I try to route it to be as consistent as possible. Mm-hmm. So, like, in a, in a sense, speedruns for, like, non-manipulated runs aren't that different from manipulated runs to a degree because it's, like, you want to use the same consistent strat the majority of the time with, like, some minor backups here and there. Yeah. And it's still a lot more execution-heavy than it looks because that entire run, I was holding the Y button. You have no idea how annoying that is. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's got a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay, 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 real quick, real quick. I noticed you had a nice, beautiful little um, marriage scene right in the middle of the run. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what inspired you to put, to show that off? Because it's a, it's, it's a proposal in a GDQ. Like, you can't go wrong with that. That's very true. You really can't argue. <laughs> no, no you, you can't argue with that. But, which, by the way, Esgrunt, the guy who, who voiced Jacob, he's single and ready to mingle, and I'm ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, guys. You heard it here. Alana's not single. Sorry, she's taken. She was adorable. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So I've heard of that. Uh, it looks like that was that was mostly just for show because I hear that you can get little offspring that can join your party. But that yeah, been... but that costs too much time right, to do. Been, yeah. um, we do want a marriage support actually because like the S support gives like more stats. I think in Jacob's case it gives like plus one strength, plus one defense. I think I don't remember off the top of my head. So it was useful for a little while. Yeah, he, 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 it's actually pretty important. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but but the cutscene itself that was for us. <laughs> I think that if we didn't if it wasn't for that we wouldn't have gone over us. But it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we had fun. That's okay. Yeah. No. Way more important. Um, <laughs> so I want to get a little time in for some social media questions. Fire away. All right. So we have uh, <laughs> this is from T Flower. Hi T Flower. Five six five. Who says um, what color socks are you wearing? Uh, does this answer your question? <laughs> they're, they're just white. <laughs> okay. I'll put a sock in it. <laughs> All right. Our next one is from Talon2461. What's up, Talon? Uh, who is that guy? You know, good question. Yeah, I don't know who he is. Mm. Telter. I know. Must be some lame Sonic runner. He's pretty lame. No, he's anyway. great. <laughs> <laughs> Talon says, what got you into speedrunning, and how long have you been speedrunning for? Uh, I found... So a lot of it started with individual level runs. Surprise, I actually speed ran Kirby. <laughs> with like Kirby Superstar Ultra and stuff like that with like time trials on Arena and stuff. Um, and then I, I found, also found a site called Metroid 2002 back in like 2004, 2005, which had like all these Metroid tricks you can find. And then I got into Metroid speed running and dabbled a lot into tricks there. And then I found, S, I found speed demos archived through that. And the rest is history. <laughs> there you go. So I've been around, I've been like lurking. I started lurking around the speedrunning community since like more than 15 years now. <laughs> wow. It's crazy. That's see a crazy how it's long growing. time. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. So you've really been a part of like the evolution of speedrunning. You've got sort to of. see how it's... I've mostly lurked until like 2010 and then I like actually started doing stuff. Yeah, probably. for sure. You've really gotten a good... you got a view of I've it. I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, that's very, very cool. All right, well, uh, let's throw in one more question. This is from, um, I believe it's Saez Wazlib. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, in a game that has a pretty high level of improv in comparison to other speedrun games. How do you keep your cool under pressure? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how nervous I was like the entire time. Like a big part of me was like, oh God, oh God, what do I do? This is going so horribly. This is so go- going so horribly. But like from like experience with streaming and go- doing marathon r- runs and stuff, it's like, it, as long if you just, I just try to like play it off and mm-hmm. be more positive about it. Like, you know, it happens, crap happens, whether it's my own mistake or RNG being dumb, which it very much was. <laughs> um, but 
uh, I, I, was, I was definitely panicking a lot, but I also kind of had a mentality of like trying, being like, oh, well, you know, it happens. Like, crap happens. And tried to calm myself down with that and tell myself, like, I practice this a lot. I'm experienced with it. I generally know what to do if I have bad luck for the most part. And yeah. it just comes from a lot of practice as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, you did great to me. So congratulations. <laughs> I finished the run. I'm you happy did. enough with you that. You did it. You did it. Great job again. Let's get one more round of applause for Kirby Mass's awesome Fire Emblem run. Thank you very much. Yeah, congrats, man. And thanks thank for chatting you. with me after the run. Thank you for I an interview. It. And thank you for putting this interview back because I came in at midnight and I yeah. asked Jay Hobbs to push the interview back a little bit because <laughs> it's like, I want the morning to prepare. Yeah, no worries, no worries. This so thanks awesome. a lot for, to the Kingdom Hearts crew for also adjusting their interview schedule. Hey, which is exciting because this means we now have our Kingdom Hearts 3 run coming up next. It's going to be great, guys. I can't wait for that. Woo! All right, everyone, welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019, powered by Twitch. My name is Sakura Subasa, and I'll be your host for the next couple of hours. Coming up next, of course, Kingdom Hearts 3, run by Mistmaster, 1, Crispy Me, and then 10866. One of the runs I am most anticipating for this uh, Games Done Quick. Now, one of the other things that I'm anticipating is, of course, that Kingdom Hearts 3 Level 1 Critical Mode, Dark Inferno. So uh, let's see if we can get that incentive met. We are at 17700 We need to get th to $33,333.33. So we got a bit to go. But with the help of chat, we can not only meet that incentive, but also the Super Mario Brothers 3 race. So if you are looking for something to donate, those two incentives, fantastic things to uh, donate for. All right, and with that, let's switch over to the runners with Kingdom Hearts.